Hello, my dear senior friends. How do you feel? How do you feel now after going through this essay? Cultural studies and politics in India today by Thaskaram Khopadhyay. I told you it's an in-depth study of the subject. Now we are seeing, first I gave you the introduction about 16 points and then the second lecture. We took up three points. First one is the two leftist initiatives. One, the Journal of Arts and Ideas and the second is the, what was the second one? Yes, uh, about uh, uh, Indian People's Theatre Associations. Then we also spoke about the Indian Renaissance, influence of Indian Renaissance. And, uh, and the third one we saw Nehru's initiatives, although there was, it was, these initiatives were hegemonic in nature, Nehru's. But uh, of course, in good faith, bona fide, we don't say that he was a dictator, or he was any intentions, intentions to become a dictator. He was a great liberal democratic democrat and the architect of our uh, first prime minister of our uh, India, architect of modern India. So we will say the other side of that, the positive side of that, that is all these centralized uh, initiatives were made for cultural consolidation. So that way we will save him. Yeah. So, okay, today we will uh, uh, discuss the next three points, which are the first, Indian popular films. Indian films, uh, popular films. Hindi films. Second, we will discuss TV programs, TV programs and their their impact. And fourth, we will discuss visual arts, visual arts. That is painting, painting. Some some interesting points will come up today. Yeah. Indian films or Indian popular films, as they call. It. As Krishnandi calls them Indian popular films. And uh, in this essay, it says in Hindi films. Same thing. Now, when you think about Indian films, you know, this magnitude, the size, you know, two and a half feature films with this ability. This is 1992. This is the statistics of 1992. 15,000, 15 million people are thronging every day around theaters. So the, across the country. That is 92. Now it is 30 million. Yeah. And then you have got what is called uh, the other thing. Uh, the 13,000 plus uh, theaters. That is 1992. Now it must be 50,000. Isn't it? If you study this. And then, what do you understand? The first impact of this uh, Indian popular film is. Indian popular or Indian film industry marginalized or uh, sidelined Hollywood, invasion of the Hollywood, 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 there is neither anything holy about it nor there is wood there. <laughs> that is interesting thing. Neither holy nor wood, but we call it Hollywood, yes. So that's the first thing. Marginalizing Hollywood and making a space for itself in, 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 within, within the nation as well as outside. Not only Hindi, along this, for example, plus South Indian films, Tollywood, Tamil, Mollywood, that is Malayalam. Yes, remember, Neela Quill, that is in 1950s, isn't it? Malayalam, yes. One president's gold medal. We should understand that. So it's a powerful medium, popular Hindi films. See that? So, first thing is it sidelined this. Second is it created a space for itself. Without the government support, that's the point. There's no support from the government. So it's, it created a space for itself and also nearby countries. You know, all the South countries, South countries, Indian films are very popular. You know, some, some of my friends went to Nigeria uh, for teaching, for, uh, as teachers. When they came back, they said that Indian Hindi films are very popular there, even African countries. South Africa, yes, there are about plenty of Indians there, settled as teachers and professionals and so on. So, Indian popular films, not only popular here, Hindi films, not only popular here, but in, the, in 
and Sahel countries and other places. And this you should understand that this is without the government's support. That's the thing. Ah, whatever it is, south or north, what happens is the main theme is uh, feudal family romance. Feudal family romance. There are films like a seminary system. Sai Bibi of Gula, where Gurudat and Meera Kumari are starring. Sah Bibi of Gula. Now there is another very famous film, Mem Chup Rehungi. That's about, again about the, uh, about the seminary system. Yes. What happens is a poor girl, a seminary son falls in love with a poor girl. Yes, a coolie, a daily person who works for daily wages for the same seminar. I was starring Sunil Dutt and uh, Meena Kumari again. Yes. Someday she will ask me, you know, why sir, you are always speaking about uh, Meena Kumari? Because those days, that is 1960s, has a uh, 50s and 60s and 70s also. Uh, she was the towering character, towering figure in Indian popular. Uh, cinema. Well, that's why I am talking about that. So this, they are, they have, they had some political overtones. At that day, the seminary system was very strong. So, uh, so it was a kind of what we must say, governments, they, they, the seminars could make or mar the government. That was power. So it's politics, entering popular films, entering politics or impact. But otherwise, you can also see popular films, see the Vigilantes, Bachchan, Amida Bachchan's films, and uh, also the sweet chocolate heroes and heroines of Rajeshkana period, Maharathana and so on. Now, Indian popular films, actually, they are Indian slums in action. What is Indian slum means? The urban poor. Urban poor means in, in, in every city, you will find that two thirds of the population live in slums. So that's a world bank politics. So these films have got a tremendous sway over the urban Indian poor. And so they could sway, they could easily move the feelings and the opinions of the films could the narrate the narration of the film, the presentation of the films could easily move uh, this huge number of people either to this side or to that side. So it had impact, that's what I'm saying. Another aspect of Indian popular films you can see is that uh, the, it is, it's criticism, film criticism. See, films like Roja and Fire attracted criticism from almost all the quarters. And you would find uh, the papers published or articles published in weeklies, journals, in newspapers, in uh, magazines, and so on. So there's a national debate on that. So that really shows how important or how the people were influenced by Indian popular film industry. The magnitude is so on space. It is uh, what we pushing the Hollywood. To a, to a, a marginalized position, then the themes dealt with the people, the target population for whom this uh, the films are made, and how those people are, are affected, and the reflection of their feelings on the electoral politics of the day. India is a sephocracy now. It's counting, count, number, count, numbers count. And therefore, you can see the films that could sway the opinion of people from to this side and that side. Along with these Indian films, the narrative part of criticism also. So also this film criticism, that also was very popular. Now, Indian films have, they have an identity of their own. And this identity of their own was it depended on three aspects of Indian films. One is frontality. Frontality. The other is, second one is, 
agnosity. And the third is the idea of darshan. darshan. Now we begin with the third one, <laughs> very simple. Pranati diagnosis is a, it's a difficult uh, concept to explain. So we will say the easiest one is darshan. Darshan, you know, what is this? That is the devotee getting a glance of the deity. So you go and stand. So in your body language, that's called corpothetics. Corpothetics. Listen. Corpothetics. That is your body language. Corpothetics. When you stand before a deity, you don't go and stand like this. Attention. Like no. Stand. So a deity symbolizes authority. So in politics also you find that. You find that people, common people waiting for the darshan of their leaders. See that? How that darshan is converted into a, a corporatistic sin in, in politics. It is that. So it's a political order. Now, frontality and agnosity. Agnosity means a symbolic. Characters are symbolic. And if you want to know that further, you should know what is what is meant by frontality. Frontality means the prior knowledge of mythology. Understand? The audience, if you have got a prior knowledge of mythology, then it will be easier for you to understand the heroes and heroines of Indian films. Some idea, for example, you find a very good hero. Then, that is, that if you have got the idea of Sri Ram, then you will be able to understand this hero and his deeds much better than if you don't know anything about Sri Ram. Ravana, for example, the villain. So when you find a villain in Indian films, if you have an idea about villain or Duryodhana, then you can better understand the villain. That is what is. So your prior knowledge of mythology is, or, or as, as it is written in the essay, situating the situating myth in film, in painting, and so on. Situating myth means this is what I said. I, 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 this is what, this is how it is explained. You cannot take a myth and put it there. No. So mythical characters. They resemble mythical characters. The characters in films, they resemble mythical characters. And therefore, if you have got prior knowledge of myths, then you can understand these characters. And mythical characters are icons. That is iconosity. They are icons. Icons of either virtue or evil. Ravana is an icon of evil. Duryodhana is an icon of evil. But Sri Rama is an icon of good. Sita is an icon of good. Understand? Something that is good. So if you have, say, in, in, a, in a film, say for example, we find there is a, there is a very, what is called, um, submissive and uh, uh, well-behaved uh, Bahu. A Bahu means uh, wife, somebody's wife. Then you will think of Sita. So if you have got prior knowledge of Sita, then you will understand this uh, woman and woman's behavior better. That is frontality. Somebody somewhere has written like the frontality means showing the front part of the character in front of the camera. I don't know what, what is it. What does that person mean? I don't know. I, say, Therefore, I don't want to comment anything about that. But frontality means this, as far as I know. If you have got any ideas, you can also contribute. I can also give these icons. Icons. Characters are icons. So if characters are icons, then you should know. If you if you don't have prior, if you don't have prior knowledge, then it will be difficult for you to understand. And it's I say go to the cynic models. Characters. So you stand there. So and then you have got corporatics, that's the idea behind it. Understand? So whatever happens in Indian films. It has got a bearing on politics, politics of the day. I think that is clear now. So that's very, very important place. And the second is TV programs. TV programs, what happened to TV programs is 
When you think about the gigantic, the magnitude, etc. of the uh, you see, the serials of epics, serialized epics, Indian epics, like Mahabharata and Ramayana, and uh, it is said that this propagandist in nature, this propaganda, this political reception, that was the idea behind it. And therefore, what I said, blindly pro political. And therefore, uh, the author, Bhaskar Mahabharata, the says, he concludes about TV. We are speaking about Indian politics today. So, this serializing of Indian epics, they were a kind of propaganda for Hindu fundamentalism. And they want to bring or uh, get Hindu fundamentalist ideas into the minds of the people. Therefore, Bhaskar Mukhapadhyaya says that TV was reduced to technology of dissemination rather than a cultural form. So, technology of dis disseminating ideas. Disseminating ideas means propagating, propaganda. It's a propaganda machine. So, it has got direct impact on uh, politics. And then we come, so come about uh, visual arts, when you, when you take your visual arts. There's also you have this Darshan, model Darshan. Visual arts paintings, once upon a time, were disinterested art pictures for the art productions. But in the politics of this day, when everything is messed up with politics, what happens is these pictures were uh, they, they were cumbersome performances. Performative. These pictures, pictures of gods, paintings of gods and goddesses. They were cumbersome performances. That is what this cumbersome. Pictures were cumbersome performances. That means there is something to say. Not disinvested. Not disinvested. But they were uh, cumbersome performance. So there was a there were that's there is some dynamic dynamics of performance in them. And there also, what is the performance? The performance is the devotee standing like this. So what happens is you are a slave and God is the master. In politics, leaders are masters, common people, we otters, we the common people, we are slaves. Understand? Uh, in, in, in election we can see now, in elections we can see, suppose the minister is our friend. Before he becomes a minister, he is like our friend, we sit together. There's a, but once he becomes a minister, if you want to see, you have, you have all these protocols protocols and then uh, the, the formalities and so on, so you, and that is again corporate ethics. Your body language changes. Understand? You say when you are using, so when you are talking to your friend and when you are talking to your minister or a god, there is a difference in body language and that is body language difference is called the corporate ethics. So again that is called the bearing on politics. So visual arts. And visual art, uh, they borrowed conventions from Western Western painters. Oil painting, oil painting conventions were introduced. As a result of that, gods and goddesses became more uh, lively. See that more lively, like that our leaders become lively and then we present like this. So the point here, when we consider art, and this, once art was disinterested. It's no interest connected to that. But later on you find that even the painting of gods and goddesses, there is some implied meaning. The darshan has got an implied meaning. That is master and slave. This is how all these, that means films, we have seen films, how this influenced the politics of today, TV programs, we have already seen so, with, the, with an agenda, 
propaganda and TV became a, but what does the technology of dissemination of ideas and visualize there is performative dimension for pictures of gods and goddesses or they are compressed to performances rather than disinterested pictures disinterested art productions that is the difference once upon a time they were disinterested art productions but now it is compressed to performances i hope you followed me and uh, so we have now covered uh, six points the first one is uh, the journal of arts and ideas second indian people's theater association and third nehru's initiative misunderstood as hegemonic but actually it was for national consolidation for indian popular films or hindi films their magnitude how they managed to carve out a space for uh, itself and uh, the film industry and uh, also it's uh, the the mode of narration the the rebellion so to say the revolution revolutionary ideas presented to people and and uh, how identified we can say the films the stuff in the films the themes in the films and what the what the indian urban uh, poor uh, was large in millions of them say so that their their what they thought and what they see there is a synchronization Understand? producing a synergy as we can say producing a synergy of effects yes and in the film criticism roja and fire and in the uh, identity fraternity iconicity and darshan so these are the thing they have a political order so i think that and then we have our tea programs and also wishes so six points we have already covered now we have ten points more it's very simple because when you think about uh, i the seventh one is english literature studies because we are doing you are doing, doing that now and so it becomes easy for you what you are doing i am going to we are going to speak about and discuss together and so i don't think it should make any difficulty for you okay so go to the text once again as i said come back in the next class with your doubts and your problems if you still don't get idea of fraternity iconicity and darshan all right we will uh, discuss it together and we will find after all learning is a joint venture so have a nice day enjoy your life relax